Employment Law This Week. I'm George Whipple. Our top story, federal contractors must provide paid sick leave. Under a new final rule announced by the Department of Labor, workers on federal projects can take leave to care for themselves or a family member. The rule will provide sick leave to almost 600,000 employees once it goes into effect on January 1, 2017. Dean Singlewald has more. For federal contractors, they're now required to provide employees performing work on or in connection with a contract one hour of paid sick leave for every 30 hours worked, up to 56 hours per year. Now that's seven paid sick days employers previously didn't have to provide their employees. On top of that, accrued unused sick leave is to be carried over from year to year. Now the use of paid sick leave cannot be made contingent on an employee finding a replacement. And in addition, federal contractors are prohibited from interfering with or discriminating against any employee for taking or attempting to take paid sick leave or for assisting any other employee in asserting that right. A host of important changes coming for employers in California. Starting January 1st, employers will be prohibited from requiring California employees to have their claims adjudicated in a forum outside of the state or under any choice of law outside of California law. The new law includes a notable exception for agreements where employees are represented by counsel in negotiating choice of law, venue, or forum. The state also recently enacted legislation that prohibits employers from asking job applicants about juvenile criminal convictions. California employers are currently prohibited from considering arrests that did not result in convictions. The EOC publishes its controversial final rule on pay data. Businesses with 100 or more employees will now be required to submit detailed pay reports that include information on race, gender, and ethnicity of its workers. The data will reportedly help the agency track pay discrimination, but business groups argue that the new rule could cost employers over $400 million. Employers must file their revised EEO-1 pay data reports by March 31, 2018. Positive drug tests hit a 10-year high. After years of declines, Positive workforce drug tests have seen an increase of 4% over the last three years, reaching the highest level in a decade in 2015. According to Quest Diagnostics Drug Testing Index, positive results for amphetamines, marijuana, and heroin have increased each year for the past five years, and post-accident positive tests have risen 30% since 2011. Employers should take note But also be aware that OSHA's new rules on reporting workplace injuries may limit their ability to require post-accident drug tests. And that brings us to our tip of the week. Lynn Shapiro-Snyder, founder and president of Women Business Leaders in Healthcare, is here to continue our celebration of Global Diversity Awareness Month with some advice on how to think about diversity of thought at the board level. A company's success relies on having an effective board of directors. One of the elements of effectiveness is having diversity of thought at the board level. Diversity of thought is interpreted different ways, but one of the best ways to interpret it is to make sure you have gender diversity at the board level. Thanks, Lynn. That's it for Employment Law this week. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.